Hey guys, it's Tyler from Nelly Security, and in this video, we're going to take a look at these incredible and compact PTZ security cameras from Uniview. This camera is available in two resolutions, 2 megapixel or full HD 1080p and 5 megapixel. Featuring a 350 degree pan, a 90 degree tilt, and a 5 times optical zoom, this PTZ brings a ton of powerful performance packed into a compact and attractive housing. Set up to 1024 PTZ presets. Rotate between those presets with up to 16 different patrols. You can even trigger a certain preset based on motion detection. Other incredible features include a gorgeous starlight sensor for low light performance, a built-in microphone, and a slot for a micro SD card. The 5 megapixel version even has a built-in speaker for two-way audio. Two-way audio. Two-way audio. And the ability to connect to your network via Wi-Fi. If you're looking for an indoor PTZ that can bring you the power of an outdoor camera at a fraction of the size, look no further. And today we are going to take an in-depth look at these PTZ cameras to help you decide if these are the security cameras for you. Now let's go ahead and start with a quick unboxing. First, let's open this 2 megapixel camera. In this baggie, we have all of our hardware and all of our paperwork. So we have our mounting template here and our quick start guide and of course our screws and wall anchors. And here is the PTZ itself. As you can see, the form factor on this thing is incredible. It's super small, especially for a PTZ. And I mean, I just love the way this camera looks. It's, it looks very nice and clean. Uh, it's got a pretty cool design. Under this flap here, we have a slot for a micro SD card, as well as our reset button. Now, without even turning this camera on, we can go ahead and check out its pan and its tilt. Uh, it's got a 90 degree tilt and a 350 degree pan. So that means it goes from right here to right here. So it does have an excellent pan radius. It doesn't go all the way around, so you can't just make continuous circles with it, but you will be able to see pretty much everything around the camera. We will just need to keep that in mind when we install it, um, which it's super easy to do. All we have to do is slide this mounting plate counterclockwise, and it pops right out. We can go ahead and screw this where we need to, and you can see even on the plate, there is this label here that tells us where the front of the camera is. And then once you have this installed where you need it, you simply turn this clockwise and lock the camera back into place. You can see that we do have this IR glass around the lens. Uh, it's actually anti-reflective glass, so it, it just works really well with the IR LEDs. And right above the IR glass, uh, this camera does have a built-in microphone. And the fact that that microphone is on the lens means as you pan and tilt this thing, the microphone moves with the camera lens. So wherever you're looking, that's where you're going to be picking up sound as well. Now let's talk about some of the differences between the two megapixel model, which we just unboxed, and the five megapixel model. Now the most obvious difference is the resolution. The two megapixel camera shoots video at full HD 1080p or 1920 by 1080 pixels, whereas the five megapixel version has a resolution of 2592 by 1944 pixels. So it is a much bigger and much more detailed image. It's not quite 4K, but it does come close. Another difference between these two cameras is the five megapixel version also has this LED indicator light. And here, let me show you what that does. I'll go ahead and power up this camera using just a 12 volt DC connector, and I won't connect it to my network just yet. And as you can see, as soon as it's powered up, the camera starts moving around, it's panning and tilting, and you can tell as it warms up, this LED indicator light is a solid red. That means the camera is powered up, but it is not currently connected to our network. As I connect this camera to our network with an ethernet cable, 
you can see that the light immediately turns a solid green. This is just a really nice feature as it lets you know right away, immediately after you install it, whether or not your camera is up and running. Another difference between these two cameras is this speaker on the side of the camera. Now, while both of these PTZ cameras do have a built-in microphone, only the 5 megapixel version has this built-in speaker. So if you pick the 5 megapixel version, you can enable two-way audio either from your computer or from your mobile device. A final difference between these two cameras is the amount of recording events available to you. The 5 megapixel version has the full range of Uniview intelligent events available, whereas the 2 megapixel version only has intrusion detection. Now, as you can see, we have installed this mini PTZ here in our warehouse. This is the 5 megapixel version, and you know, I thought it looked good when I was unboxing it here at the desk. I think it might look even better up there. This thing is sleek. Most importantly, it's compact. I love the way this thing looks up there, but I prefer function over fashion. So let's go ahead and jump on the web interface to see how well this thing performs. All right, one cool part about doing this video is I get to unveil to you our brand new warehouse. Now we've been in this building for a couple of months, but we haven't really shown it off all that much. So without further ado, let's pan up and I will show you our warehouse. It's very nice and spacious. It's a beautiful location and just tons of room here to grow. Now, as I click these buttons on the side, obviously that activates the PTZ motor. Uh, it's a pretty quiet motor and it's very responsive. Right here, it's set at a speed of six, but we can change the speed. We can move it to the fastest setting here at 10. And its slowest setting at a one you can see it moves very slowly. You also have access to the PTZ controls on the live view itself. So we can get rid of this sidebar, throw this thing into full screen, and we can see as I move my cursor to the edge of the picture, uh, it turns into these little arrows. So I can click and hold, and it moves the camera around, just like that. As I said before, this does not have a complete 360 degree rotation, but it does come pretty close. So let's see how far we can get. All right, it stops right there. You can see, I can even see the mount that we're attached to here. And now going the other direction, and boom, that's where it stops. Again, I see the tip of this mount here. That tells me I'm gonna be able to see everything no matter where I install this camera. Again, the only limitation is I can't go around and around. Let's go ahead and set up some presets so I can navigate the warehouse very quickly with the press of a button. The first preset I'm gonna do is going to be a wide shot of the warehouse where I can see as much as possible. So maybe about like right there. To set this as a preset, I'm gonna hit this plus button down here in the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to give it a number of two and a preset name, let's call it wide shot. Now I'm going to go ahead and give you a tour of our warehouse and as we go around I will set up some presets. So the next preset I'm going to want to set up is here at the entrance to our warehouse. This is the door between our warehouse and our showroom. Something that I definitely want to have access to very quickly if I need to. So I will set this up as preset number three with a name of entrance. And now if we want to call a particular preset all we have to do is click that arrow and it snaps right to it. Now I'm going to zoom in at our receiving location over here, and I will set this as preset number four. We might also want a preset that is focused in on our warehouse crew here. So I will center the camera right here on these desks and add a preset number five. Over here we have Sean's office, our fearless leader. So I will set this up as preset number six. Down here we have our test bench. This is where our techs come to test out cameras, run any issues. So we will set this as preset seven. Now this excellence, effort and integrity door, probably one of the most important doors in the building, not really. This is our production room where I'm actually sitting right now recording this video. So I will set this up over here as preset number eight. In fact, just one moment.
So there we have eight presets. We can keep playing around with this if we need to and set up as many presets as we need. We can store up to 1024, so we're not gonna run out of space anytime soon. And now there are a few ways that we can use these presets. Let's go ahead and take a look at patrols. If we click on this patrol menu and click add new, we can add up to 16 routes here. So let's start with number one. We'll call this main route. What this is gonna do is let us set up a few presets that the camera is going to cycle through, and we can edit a couple of things such as the speed at which it goes to those presets and the amount of time that it stays there. So let's add a new preset. Let's say we want it to start here at this wide shot, and it can stay there for 120 seconds or two minutes. And it's going to snap here, let's say at a speed of 10. Then let's add a new preset. We are going to zoom in on the production room, we're going to stay there for 120 seconds. Let's move there at a speed of five. And then let's say we want it to move over to Sean's office, hang out there for 120 seconds, maybe at a speed of three, which is gonna be pretty slow. So I will go ahead and call this patrol by clicking the play button. And there we go, it moved me to the wide angle in the center. After two minutes, it's going to move the camera over to the production room and stay there for two minutes. And then once that time has passed, it's going to slowly pan across the entire warehouse and end up at Sean's office. We can also come down here to the patrol menu and we can set up a schedule. So for instance, if I wanted our camera to be in its main route during a certain time of the day, say between six o'clock p.m to 11.59. Uh, we can do that. I can also copy and paste this across all of the days of the week. Let's go ahead and jump into our setup menu and we'll take a look at some of the further PTZ functions that we can set up from the back end. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this web interface. We do have other videos where I show you some more of the features. Right now I wanna focus only on the PTZ controls in the menu. The first one we have is this home position, which right now is turned off. If I enable this, I can either set a preset or a patrol to be our home location. This means after a certain amount of time, right now it's set to five seconds, it will snap back to either that preset or that patrol until the next time you manually move the lens around. So for instance, I could set the wide shot as our home view. So with that enabled, here I am at my home location. If I call another preset here, such as entrance and wait five seconds, it's going to snap back to that home position just like that. Now I want to move into the event tab here. And you'll notice that we're going to our basic events tab and not our intelligent events tab. This is because this feature actually isn't available for intelligent events. It's only available for motion detection, tampering, audio, and alarm input and output. So what I could do here is go into my PTZ. I could set my entrance as my home location. And now that our camera is pointed here at the entrance, what I can do is set up a trigger action and set up my go to preset as a trigger action in response to motion detection and to my wide shot. So if I do this and click save, and here we are in our home location and we can see that as it detects motion here, it will pop back up to this middle shot. Now this is a pretty cool feature, especially since there's no auto tracking on these PTZs. You can kind of manipulate this so that it, it is focused on a particular entry point and then upon motion detection, uh, kind of expand out and show a wider view so that you can see where that person is going. Unfortunately, you cannot set up a patrol as a motion detection trigger, only the individual presets. So let's keep exploring some of the things that this camera can do. First, I wanna go up into setup and image, and here I can adjust the image settings. Let's go ahead and call our receiving preset. As you can see, when I am zoomed in here, I can't see anything that's happening outside. Uh, it's just way too bright in there and way too dark in here. So something I can come in here and do under exposure is turn on WDR or wide dynamic range. If I turn this on, I can play around with the levels, but you can see already, I can see a lot better what's going on out there. I can at least see the dumpster and if there was a vehicle or a person out there and if this door was open a little bit wider, I would be able to see better out there. But again, I can play around with the level and change things around a bit. But that is a good option to use if you're pointed at a bright location or a window, any scenario where you have uneven lighting and you would like the camera to better balance that scene. 
Another feature that I want to look at here is the Wi-Fi capabilities. So if we go to our setup menu here and head to the network tab, we can see that we have a second tab here for Wi-Fi. I'll go ahead and click on that. And you can see that we have three options here. We can turn Wi-Fi off completely. We can turn Wi-Fi on or leave it on a Wi-Fi hotspot. This means you can set up this SSID and password here. And what that will allow you to do is connect pretty much any device to the internet using this camera as its access point. So that's a really cool feature. But we can also just completely set this up with Wi-Fi. Now you are going to need to connect this camera to an ethernet cable initially just to get everything configured. But once you come in here and select Wi-Fi and search for your Wi-Fi network, you can now ditch the ethernet cable, connect this to power using a 12 volt DC connector, and have this thing up and running on your network using Wi-Fi. And I do want to remind you that the Wi-Fi functionality is only available on the five megapixel camera and not the two megapixel version. Finally, let's head back to the live view and check out this two-way audio. Now, all I have to do to turn on this audio is click this speaker button down at the bottom of the screen, and it will enable the microphone on the camera, and I'll be able to hear exactly what's happening out there in the warehouse. Now I will go ahead and pull out my cell phone, and we will activate the two-way audio from the Easy View application. And this is a really neat application. Uh, we are able to control the PTZ using the PTZ functions. There is a little bit of lag on the cell phone, but that's to be expected. And you can view this camera and control the PTZ movements from anywhere in the world once you enable Easy Cloud on the web browser and scan that QR code. But for now, let's go ahead and enable this two-way audio. Hey, Tanner, what's up? Hi. Hey, what do you think of this PTZ? Well, that's it for our review on these Uniview Mini PTZs. These are incredible cameras and excellent choices for just about any indoor setup. If you have any questions at all about these cameras, go ahead and leave those in the comments below or send us an email, give us a call, we'll be happy to help you out. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and like this video, share it with your friends, and follow us across social media so you never miss another video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.